In this video I'm going to be looking at how to uh, set up a gridded image uh, for use in illustrating from a reference photo. Uh, so I'm going to pull in a reference photo, I'm going to set up a grid for it, and then show you how that can be applied directly to uh, drawing an accurate representation of what you see in the photo. Uh, this is really commonly done in illustration, especially when you're working for a reference for something like a portrait. Uh, so I am going to do a new document. I'm going to set it to a uh, US paper size, 8.5 by 11, uh, 300 pixels per inch. Uh, for the sake of this, I'll go a little lower. I'll do 150, uh, just to make sure everything runs quickly. And let's say this is the canvas that I'm going to draw on. This is intending to be printed at this size. This is the canvas that I intend to draw on. Uh, then I'm going to take whatever image it, I, it is that I want to draw from. I, I found a uh, nice image of Vincent Price to use here. And I'm going to resize it according to what I want it to actually look like on the image when the drawing is completed. So I'll go ahead and set it up this way. That way I have the most accurate grid possible for my canvas in particular. Shift that over just a little. That looks about right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a combination of two things. I'm going to use the line tool and also Photoshop's automated grid system that it already has in place. Uh, I've mentioned before I'm not a fan of tracing uh, when it comes to drawing from a photo like this, although it can be tempting. Uh, rather, I prefer the more or organic approach that you get when you grid it out, uh, even if the grid is not particularly detailed. Actually, especially when the grid is not particularly detailed, leaving a little bit of space for improvisation. Uh, so if I hit Command Apostrophe, uh, this is what brings up the automated grid in Photoshop. Uh, it's command apostrophe on the Mac, it's uh, control apostrophe on the PC. And this actually doesn't do me a lot of good, uh, especially because the, the grid hasn't been customized. And also I'm wanting to create myself a grid reference, which means I want to save it as a JPEG. And you can make the grid visible, but I honestly find it easier just to use the line tool. So I'm going to walk through basically how to do that. Uh, right now, it's not giving me... Uh, equal squares is not giving me actual squares, which is really what I prefer. And also it has it split into these three divisions. This is usually what Photoshop's grid looks like by default. So we're going to make adjustments to the grid uh, by going to Edit, Preferences, Gri Guides, Grid, and Slices. Now if you're on a Mac, you have to go up to the Photoshop button, Preferences. But on a PC, it is under the Edit menu. Now inside of this, you can see that currently it's set to a grid line for every 10%, uh, which is why these aren't perfect squares. Rather, what I'd prefer to do is set them to inches, and I'll set it to something like 1.5, not 105, 1.5. And then I'll drop these subdivisions down to 1, so we get something a little simpler. This is a much better grid to work with. It's a little bit more loose. It gives me some space to improvise some. And as I said, that doesn't print out. If I save it as a JPEG, the grid is not going to be visible. So we're going to go over it with colored lines. Within the Shape tool, access the Line tool. And then change the fill color to something that is easily identifiable, such as red. And a weight of, for this example, we'll say 3 pixels. Again, up here on the top. Now, by holding Shift, I can drag out straight lines really easily uh, using the Line tool. And I'm not going to get it exactly perfect with the grid. It doesn't really have to be. It's just enough to, to give me the right idea, get me in the right place when I'm actually doing the illustrating. So again, holding shift, it allows me to do vertical lines, horizontal lines. That way I don't have to sit here and try to stretch it out and measure it and get it quite right. Just hold shift. So there's the basic grid already. It moves pretty quickly. The other thing I want to do is for some areas, and you'll find this in particular with faces, uh, it's difficult to get it precise on something like the eyes, which are an extremely important part of the face when it comes to it being recognizable. So if you're doing a famous face like this, you may want to add a little something extra uh, to help you pinpoint exactly where they're at. What I do for that is just in a few areas I'm going to throw in some diagonal lines that will give me just a little additional reference 
for where each of these elements falls in place. I don't want to do this all over because all over is not important, but the places like faces and hands, it can actually be really helpful and a really good idea. If you're like me and you struggle with drawing hands anyway, this is nearly necessary. So now I have a custom grid for this picture. And using this, I have a little bit of room for interpretation. I also have enough accuracy to make sure this looks like the person that I want it to look like once I'm working from it. So what I'll do is I'll select all of these lines. You can see how creating the grid has put a huge mess in my layers palette in terms of the number of shapes. I'll select all those. I will control click or right click if I'm on PC and merge them down to a single shape and I'll just rename that as grid. Now that I have all this in place, I can save this out as a JPEG onto the de desktop. We'll just call it Vincent Price Grid. And then I can delete the photo out. I don't need it anymore. Instead, I'm going to drag down my tab here so you can see the two of these side by side. File, open, open my gridded image. And now I'm ready to work directly from this reference. So this is a great way to handle it. And this is one reason why gridding is much easier to do in digital form, like in Photoshop, uh, than it is to do on traditional forms on paper. I still grid if I work in charcoal, if I work in pencil, but doing it in a digital way like this using the original photo and using the same grid for both the canvas that I'm working on and the reference photo uh, means that you don't have to measure and go through the tedious aspects of putting a grid together that you often do when working traditionally. So this is a great way to create a grid and then get started on drawing.